Evening, I'm Sarah Dachi. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto. The rise of super contagious variants now changing the game of COVID, but some people getting sick just a few weeks after a previous infection. And the numbers really show that. Take a look. These numbers come from the state first obtained by the Bay Area News Group. Reinfections accounted for about one in seven new COVID cases in the first three weeks of July. That's about 50,000. And that, of course, is just the cases that are known and documented. And San Jose Mayor Sam Lucardo was one of those people reinfected. He tweeted that he tested positive for COVID again last Thursday. That's only two months after his first infection. He says his symptoms were minor. And then, of course, there's President Biden's rebound case, which is different from a reinfection. He tested positive after testing negative for a few days. And his case is believed to be tied to the antiviral drug Paxlovid. Joining us live to talk about all of this, UCSF infectious disease expert, Dr. Peter Chin Hong. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to explain all of this. So I want to start with these COVID reinfections. It used to be assumed that you'd catch COVID and then you have some kind of immunity for maybe a few months, but that's not the case with these new variants? Yes, it's not the case, unfortunately, uh, because the new variants look so different, even from BA2 or BA2.12.1, that the antibodies you have, which are the front guards, don't quite recognize the enemy. But the good news is once the enemy gets inside of you, no matter what it looks like, uh, they get kicked out if you're up to date on your vaccines. So this is, I'm bringing back the, my old trusted <laughs> COVID dog. The spike protein looks super twisted and weird. And that's what BA5 superpower is. Uh, it's the escape artist of Omicron. Hmm. Yeah, always good when we have the props, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do we know about the long-term health risks tied to reinfections? There's some new research. It could be raise your chances of getting long COVID or even more severe symptoms. Well, there's one study from uh, Washington University suggesting that the more times you get reinfected, the higher your odds of getting one of these chronic symptoms. However, I, I still uh, go back to the fact that you probably reduce your risk the most by being vaccinated uh, and even taking Paxlovid, and we'll talk about that, but because one of the key studies early on shows that um, the biggest predictor of chronic symptoms after COVID infection is the amount of virus in your bloodstream. So things that kick out the virus will help reduce your chances of chronic infection. So let's talk about that. You just mentioned it. President Biden has this rebound case. So this is, you know, coming into the spotlight now. And this happened after he took that antiviral drug, Paxlovid. What do we know about why that happens? We know he says he doesn't really have any symptoms at all right now. Does it cause any concerns at all about taking that drug or is it just part of the game? I think it's part of the game. Actually, when we look at well-designed studies, um, there's been a few so far, one showing about 1%. And a recent bigger one of 14,000 people showing that the risk is about 5%. In the trials, it was 1% to 2%. But the interesting thing is, even if you don't take Paxlovid, the chances are you're probably going to rebound as well. It's just that we're not looking. Um, in the Pfizer study, in the people who took nothing, they had about a 1% to 2% chance of rebound. I still think we're trying to understand. But to me... Uh, what it means is that I'm still enthusiastic about Paxlovid, but probably I'm most enthusiastic for people who are unvaccinated, for people who are older, immune compromised, and maybe for that young person who has no medical problems, that 5% chance of rebound uh, may not be worth it. And, and doctor, we have to ask you this because we just reported it at the top of our show. The governor declaring a state of emergency for the monkeypox outbreak. So what exactly will this mean? So it means that uh, we'll have flexibility to use funds earmarked for COVID uh, and sort of be flexible in terms of dedicating them or using some of them for monkeypox. Uh, previously, funds earmarked for COVID, you can only use it for that. There are other you know, sort of like discretionary funds for emergencies you can use. But this, this really allows people to be flexible within the state of California. But we hope California can't do it on its own, that this will have a domino effect, like shelter in places actually following the same cadence, San Francisco, the state, hopefully the country, and that's what I'm crossing my hands for, because unless the feds get involved, we can't do everything on our own. Well, Dr. Peter Chin Hong, I know from personal experience, you are busy all day long, <laughs> so thank you for taking your precious time to talk with us and explain all of this. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, Ryan. My pleasure, Sarah. Thank you.